Hello there, folks. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to play Patchwork. Patchwork is a two-player game and it's relatively short. I would say maybe a half hour. The concept of the game is you are sewing a quilt and in order to make a quilt it takes a lot of time and a lot of materials and so those are two things you are balancing as you play the game to make sure you don't run out of either. Besides that, you are of course trying to make your patches fit on your quilt. So, you know, a lot of it is trying to position things just right so that you have a beautiful quilt. And the other goal of the game is to collect buttons. Buttons sort of serve as the currency for this game, um, but they also give you victory points at the end of the game. So the setup of the game is very quick. Start with the time board. This will go in the center. There are two options for the time board. This one or that one. And Make sure to set aside this 7 by 7 batch. I'll explain that a little later on. And also, we'll take out these single square patches. And these will go on the board where they show the little patches. Then we will take all of these patches and we'll make a big circle with them. And you can just do this fairly randomly. Um, but make 
sure they're in like a one single file line um, so that it's easier to see what order they are in the circle is just two squares and this tracker will go right after it and pretty much any time when we're talking about this circle moving in the circle it'll be in a clockwise direction actually all of the time always clockwise so as games always like to do they have a quirky rule for who should go first. So in this one, it is the player who most recently used a needle. That is the starting player, which in my circles is probably always me. <laughs> I don't have too many friends that also so Maybe just a couple. Or you could just randomly pick a starting player. I do not like the little quirky rolls because what ends up happening is the same person is always the starting player for a given game, which is not ideal. After you choose the starting player, um, it's a little different from other games. We won't just alternate turns one at a time. It'll actually be whoever is furthest back on the time board will be the next person to play. So for example, if I were to move up to on a turn, but I'm still behind you, then I would be able to go again. So that, you know, kind of changes the dynamic where you can choose if you want to do a little turn and then you can maybe do multiple or just uh, go with the heavy header turn. So next I will go over what a turn will look like. There are two options and you choose one uh, for your turn. So for the first option, you can buy a patch. So, you'll take a look at the next three patches after this marker in a clockwise direction. So, one, two, three, and those are the ones that will be available to you this turn. When you're choosing a patch, there's a few different things on the patch to take into consideration. First, um, of course, the amount of squares that the patch fills up uh, will help you build your quilt faster. Also, there is a little cost tab on here that shows the button cost as well as the time cost, uh, which I'll go over. And then the last thing that you'll see on a button, er, patch is extra buttons and these extra buttons will help you earn more actual currency buttons as you go along the game. Choose whichever patch you would like. Um, of course one that you can afford and then you will move the marker where that patch had been. So it'll sort of slowly move around as you pick patches, you'll move it to that spot, to that empty spot. Then you will pay the button cost 
and you will move your time tracker accordingly. So this one says two, one, two. And then the most important part, you will place your patch. So once you place your patch, you aren't able to move it, so keep that in mind. Um, but you're sort of planning ahead. Um, and can build patches on top of it. Also, you can, of course, turn and flip it however you would like. Um, and then you cannot overlap patches, so I wouldn't be able to stack this patch on top of the patch that I already had placed in a previous turn. So, that's the first turn option. Um, the second option you have for your turn is to move to the space in front of your opponent and then count how many spots that is and that's the number of buttons you'll get. So in this example, if you're yellow, you'll move one, two, three to be one spot ahead of me, and then you will get three buttons. So next I will talk through some of the events and bonuses that are on the time board. So the first one you'll see here is these little buttons which are identical to these currency buttons, and so what that means is if you pass them, you will get button income, which I don't know why, but I feel like that's a very catchy phrase. Button income, button income, button income. It's very fun to say. <laughs> um, so for button income, let me actually set up my quilt a little bit as if we had been playing, and then I can talk through button income. Here's a little bit of a quilt, and how button income works is you will count the buttons that you have already on your quilt, and that's the income you'll get. So in this example, I have one, two, three buttons. So I will earn three buttons for button income. The second thing that's on the board are the single patches that I mentioned. Um, these are pretty much what you would guess uh, when you pass a, a single patch on your turn. You will immediately take that patch and place it on your quilt. Unfortunately, you cannot save the single patch for later. You sew it in immediately. So, as we play the game, these button patches will get used up and placed on our quilts. And at some point in the game, if either of us fills up a 7x7 seven seven square, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so 7x7, seven seven, if all of these squares are filled, um, you can get the badge, which will give you seven points at the end of the game. So it can be anywhere on this quilt board, as long as it's a solid 7x7 seven seven filled. And also, uh, I think this is a little confusing on the badge. It has little seven buttons symbol. This does not mean that you get seven buttons to spend. It just means you get seven points at the end of the game, which feels a little misleading. 
the game ends when both players have made it through the full time board and have arrived at the last space. If in your last turn you, uh, you know, move more spaces than there are left, that's totally okay. You'll just end up in the last spot instead of going the full time amount allotted here. So, once everyone is at home in the center, then we will score our quilts. I've upgraded my swamp monster vibes with yet another green sweater. <laughs> the best time to wear a swamp sweater is now. <laughs> so, to score the game at the end, you will first count up the number of button tokens that you have, and then if you have the 7x7 seven seven badge, you will add 7 points to that, and then you will subtract 2 points for each empty square on your quilt. I would say most of the time people don't fill their quilt in its entirety, so usually it's sort of a low number of points. So in this example, I would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, over 9 of 24, plus my buttons and possibly the patch. And then whoever has the most points wins, and if there is a tie in the points, then you break the tie by whoever was the first player to get to the last spot. The first one there is the winner. So that is the entirety of patchwork. Um, you know, it's not the most complex, riveting game ever, um, but it is lovely for just a quiet afternoon game, winding down game, um, and of course it's two player, which is lovely. So yeah, I would recommend this game. Um, I think it's very cute, uh, imagery, cute quilt idea for a game. Um, I think that's very unique. I can't think of another, like, crafting, sewing themed game. Maybe there is. But I do like this concept. I will say it's not the most, like, repeatable game. Once you've played it a few times, you're not going to be dying to try out new strategies. It's kind of just a simple game. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's bad. Sometimes it's fun to just pick it up every few months and uh, give it a whirl. So yeah, that is it. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. And I hope that you get to play Patchwork soon in the 